Okay, this is the seven monsters to battle workout. As you'll see, we're gonna have seven exercises, all done one at a time in sequence. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. It's a Tabata style workout. You can use an app on your phone to time the intervals. And this is a very advanced, advanced workout. You're gonna be sweating. It is really high intensity on the muscles. So be patient and gentle with yourself. I'm gonna walk us through the movements. Number one is squat jumps. So for squat jumps, it's just like a traditional squat, except you'll just be jumping up in the air at the top of each squat. Now, sometimes people will buckle their knees in when they're doing this, they're collapsing the knees in. That could be very painful for the knees. So what I advise you to do, if you do have sensitive knees or any concerns, go to the wider stance and point your toes out and do the exercise like this. And that'll make it a little bit easier on your body. Now, one of the other things you could do, if you want, you could do this exercise holding on to some dumbbells to make it more advanced and more intense. Or you could also do this taking a mini band. Now, a mini band looks like this. Mini bands almost look like headbands. It's a closed loop of elastic material. And what you would do is you'd have it placed typically just above the knees and you'd be doing the exercise this way and that will add a whole other element of abduction to recruit even more of the glutes to make the exercise more intense. So those are some quick different variations. Obviously start off with one of the easier variations and you can work your way up over time. Now the next exercise we're going to be doing is a wall slide. This is an upper back postural exercise. What you're going to be doing is, I want you to imagine you're going to be against the wall and your arms are going to be in like a stick em up position, like you're being arrested, okay? It'll look a little bit like the top half of the letter H. You're going to keep your arms on the wall and you're going to go from an H to a V. H to V, okay? So if I'm using a wall over here, I'm going from H to V, H to V. Just like that. And you want to keep the back of your the back of your spine completely flat on the wall if you can. Not everybody can. Not everybody has the requisite posture to do that. But the flatter your back is on the wall, your whole spine, if you magnetize it there, the more you're going to be working the muscles. Okay? This is a simple exercise, but very effective. You will feel it burning through all the upper back muscles. Now the next one is jumping lunges. For jumping lunges, you're gonna have one foot forward, one foot back, just like this. You're gonna lunge down and you're gonna switch your feet midair. Switch your feet midair, okay? Now for some people, that exercise is a little bit too intense on their bones and joints. And for those people, I just have them not go down as deep. So I'd have them do a shallower version like this. So if you have to go a little bit shallower to start, that's fine. Then you progress to the deeper variations over time. Sometimes that exercise, that even that much impact is too much. So I encourage people, if you can't do the lunge for any reason, because your knees are just too sensitive or whatnot, then do glute bridges with your feet elevated on a bench or a chair. So if I'm going to do a glute bridge, I would lay face up here. I'd put my feet on the edge of this bench. Then I would lift my hips up and down just like so, okay? Just to give you a different view, if I was to say take an exercise ball, a different view from the side, it looks just like this. Knees bent, push your hips up and down all the way. That would be an alternative if you can't do lunges for any reason. The next exercise is incline rebound push-ups. Now this is gonna be a push-up where you have your hands elevated on something. Now, it could be literally anything, all right? I may use a bench here for today, such as this bench here. And what we're going to be doing is, 
at the top of every push-up, you're going to throw yourself off so your hands come off the surface just a couple inches. So it might look like this. All right, I go down, I do my push-up, and I jump my hands, jump my hands, just like that, all right? Now, if that's too hard, you could do your hands on a, a higher incline. You could go to the wall and do them like this if you need to make them easier. If your elbows or wrists are too sensitive, just cut out the jump part and just do a controlled push-up. In time, you can progress this movement uh, to doing it from the floor. And usually when I have people do it on the floor, you're going to cushion your knees on something. Here I'm going to use a mat, but the progression would be this over time. Just going from the floor. And then eventually from hands and feet on the floor. So that'll give you a bunch of different options. Use the option that's most appropriate for you right now with where your fitness is at. And if in doubt, start with the easiest option and just promote yourself accordingly if things aren't giving you enough of a workout. The next movement we're going to be doing is a favorite of mine, lateral bounding. Now, one of the reasons I like lateral bounding is it really works your hip stabilizers. So it's really going to help keep your pelvis in proper alignment. If your pelvis tilts or twists or shifts in any different direction, then your spine is resting on your pelvis. So people can get chronic back pain because the pelvis is out of alignment and people don't often check for this. So this is an exercise that really helps your body to keep the pelvis level and to condition those muscles. Now to do this one, you're going to be standing on your outside foot, you're going to hop laterally, and you're swinging the inside leg across, side to side like this. Now notice that my, my inside leg never touches the ground, okay? So it's always kept up, like this, side to side, okay? Now, if you can't jump for any reason, it's just too high impact, then I'm just going to get you to do side to side lunges like this instead. So that we're at least working the lower body in the frontal side to side plane. So it's at least giving somewhat of a similar training effect. And over time, perhaps you can progress on to the more high impact variation. Now, if you're doing the high impact variation and it doesn't feel hard enough, you can hold on to a weight, a medicine ball or a dumbbell and do it that way. And when I'm holding onto the dumbbell, I'm holding onto it like this with a goblet grip. You could hold it like this as well, okay? Now, the next one is hand plank wide knee ends. All right, so this one here, you're gonna be on your hands and feet. Now, you're gonna bring one knee wide and forward to the same side elbow, then back. Same side elbow and back. Just like that. Now, for some people, that might be too hard. And if it is, no worries. What you're gonna do is tent your hips up a little higher. Because if your hips are up higher, it puts more work on the upper body and takes a little bit of the work off the core if it's just too demanding for the core. So I would do the same exercise, but instead of being from here, I'd be from here a little bit and I would do it like this. So the hips are tenting up, okay? So that's just a gentle, a gentle variation you can do if the original exercise is a little bit too hard. Now, the last exercise is bowing to Buddha. For this one, what we're gonna do is, you're gonna have, you're gonna begin on all fours like this, okay? Now you're gonna slide one leg forward and one leg all the way back, like so. Now, sometimes, now both legs should be straight forward and back, so if I'm giving you a frontal view, it looks like that, okay? Both legs are straight forward and back. Sometimes this is too much pressure on the front knee for people. So what I do is I get them to shove a towel right behind there, just fold up a towel, slide it in behind there, and that'll reduce the pressure because then you're not closing the knee joint as tightly. 
You're going to have your palms together and elbows touching the lead thigh on either side. So just to give you a frontal view of that, palms are together. My elbows are touching the lead knee on either side. It's a big mistake to have the elbows out here because you're not going to have enough stability to get up. You're going to be falling over. So from this position, we're just going to hinge at the hips to extend the torso from horizontal to vertical, like this. And I'm not pushing off with my arms. I'm using the glutes, hamstrings, and low back to lift myself up and down. And then when you switch sides, it's just like so, okay? It's a very intense exercise. Sometimes people can't go all the way down on this. It's just too challenging. So what I do is I get people to go down to like a big pillow or something so that you're controlling your depth. So you just start off from here and go up and down. It's a shorter range, but it's going to help you develop the capacity over time. If I have to, I'll even use an exercise bench. I've had to do that in the past. The idea is just figure out what level of intensity is appropriate for you to begin. So this is the seven monsters workout. I've done this workout uh, on a beach, traveling everywhere else. It's excellent if you want to get a super intense workout in and you don't have access to much equipment. So if you're stuck at home or you're traveling, this is a pro athlete workout. So this is going to definitely help take your fitness to the next level.